All right, Team Frankenwork here in the shop. New garage, still working on it, but do you have a uh, maintenance you need to do? Alarm going off on the boat maybe, and you don't have time to make it to the shop, but you're, you're slightly me mechanically inclined. Yeah, a little stutter, sorry. <laughs> well, stay tuned and we'll go over two simple to do things that you can do at your house with minimal tools. Stay tuned. All right, I'm working here with my 2009 Mercury Pro XS 250. And uh, just some simple updates. I know I have some hours on it. And uh, we're gonna go over two things today. The first, spark plugs. Now everybody has their own opinions on spark plugs. Um, you might get that little sputter. Engine might not be running quite like you like it. You might not be quite getting that top speed. Everybody you see on the forums talking about props. Um, knockouts on their props and all that and how you know what's everybody else's top speed but many things take into that account um, you may have picked up a little water in your event um, because you over trimmed and you might have fouled them out well on these mercury um, high outputs they run iridium plugs um, it's your choice what plug you put in the end but I recommend putting in the NGK iridium plug let me grab a box for you Now we're not gonna go over how to gap because that's a whole nother story. But uh, laser iridium, okay, focus. It's not gonna focus. IZFR6J is what this one calls out. Um, they can get pricey and I take six of them on here, so. Uh, I've already taken a look at my plugs. They're not bad. They could be regapped. The gap on my motor um, ideal is 0 .042. So I've already gapped all my plugs. Now I'm going to pull off the cover, which actually intimidates a lot of people already. It's a large motor, and uh, it's actually just three, three clips. One on the port side, one on the starboard side. You just pull them out. One on the on the front. People expect to cover just the cowling, just to cob them right off. Well, sometimes you have to give it a little, little jolt and always lift them straight up. And when you set it down, just be sure not to drop it or set it uneven because you will chip it. Just be in mind it's your product. In the end, when you take it off, put it on, what you do to it. Um, it's gonna reflect you so if you don't care do what you want so um, I'm not gonna zoom in or anything what I'll do is I'll go through the first one um, and it's as simple as just taking a 5 8 socket pulling the plug out and this is gonna depend on your motor too, what size socket because I'm sure certain some motors take different size uh, spark plugs some have gapless plugs some uh, depend on brand this isn't just for mercury so Spark plugs are simple. Um, I like to do them one by one. That way I don't get confused um, and so forth. So I'm gonna go through and do them. I'll show you the first one and I'll try to get this camera to focus. I haven't used it in a while and it might be fun. And then I'll, I'll edit it later. Only tools that I recommend is uh, your wrench or your, uh, uh, everybody calls them different things. Five eighths, and I'm gonna use an extension because of where mine are located. So gently pull the uh, plug wire off from the cap, twisting a little bit, don't over pull. Otherwise, if you pull the wire out of the cap, you might as well just go buy a new wire. Um, there are ways to fix it if you know how, um, but like I said, that's another video too, so. And if you can't find your spark plugs, just follow the wires. As long as you know what a spark plug wire is, you'll be good to go.
So this is the old plug. It's not going to focus. It's still concentrating on me. And this is a new plug. Let me see if I do this. Now, it's not the burning and all that, okay? Two strokes, burn oil, they're supposed to, it injects it through, okay? What I'm looking for is on the top, there's actually an iridium deposit um, and it needs to still be there. Now, these old plugs still have them, but when I check the gap on them, uh, the gap has opened up a lot. Um, and then the iridium pin on this one is worn down a lot. So I'm going to change them out. I'm going to keep these ones um, for an emergency if needed. These are about 30 bucks a piece. So, um, and to install them, NGK does not recommend putting anything on the thread. They have a, a coating already applied to them, so um, once you get it hand tied in, you're just gonna snug it. Um, I don't torque them, so uh, eighth inch turn. Uh, the box says, uh, let me look at it real quick. Sixteenth of a turn, so uh, I like to put my spark plug back into my socket and put it in by hand first, and then I won't. Even, I'll attach this later. So, uh, and that's it. And then you put your your plug wire back on, then you do the rest. So, give me a second. I'll be back. You want to put them in by hand because it's so easy actually to cross thread a spark plug because they're not straight in, they're uh, at angles and they're all at slightly different angles. Um, you wouldn't think so, but it's just how the manufacturer developed uh, the optimal performance. So. so that's all the way in. That's tight and then just a little. That's it. And then I have my spark plug wire here. It should click. Then I always like to make sure the other side's on. So and that's it. Now yeah, I have five more to do, so. I'm gonna do those and then I'll uh, I'll probably speed this video up. turned off for some reason and went to sleep. Like I said, I haven't used this in a while, so I'm gonna continue. I'm almost done uh, with the spark plugs, sorry. But very importantly, when you're inserting the spark plug, not to bang it around a lot on anything, because if you regap it, um, if you look at the, so on the one on the front, it tells you what the required gap is. 0.042 is what this motor requires. If you look at the manual, there's a range of 0.041 to 0.043. So I do like 0.042.
Okay, so obviously, probably took me a little longer because I had to run back to my other garage and grab some pliers, a flashlight, things like that because I just didn't think about it. Um, this garage is not set up all the way yet. It's not even finished, so I finally got my boat undercover. Um, I'm still working on it. Um, and uh, let me say again, I do understand that this is simple things and some people just would rather take this to the shop. So uh, I got the motor turned, so the spark plugs are complete. I got the motor turned for the next thing. Um, uh, and one more thing on the spark plugs, okay? So, well, two more things, I'm sorry. So if you buy the pre-gap plugs, which I did not, so let me reiterate. Most plugs nowadays will come pre-gapped to something. Uh, if you buy the pre-gapped ones, and uh, most plugs are available in a pre-gapped version, um, I did not. I bought the standard Iridium, well, the ones that are recommended for this. And uh, But if you buy the ones that say they're ready for, to just push in or put in, I would recommend checking them, even though they come with a cardboard tube and everything, because they can get jarred in the box. Um, the couple thou difference will make a difference on the performance of the motor. Um, I know how I treat my fuel. Um, I always run 92 ethanol free. Um, what a lot of people don't understand is the newer motors, when you don't run, um, uh, and, it, and there's a census out about fuel, okay, but that's a whole nother story. Um, uh, when you don't run the higher grades or the cleaner fuels, uh, your motor will detune itself and you won't get the maximum performance. So to make sure my motor's running good and happy, I changed the plugs. And I don't know when they were changed previously. Um, and I know what's in my fuel tank. My fuel tank holds 50 gallons. Um, it's always got 92 ethanol free and it's always got AMS oil quick shot. Um, 50 gallons takes this entire bottle for continuous maintenance. If I was doing a clean out of the fuel system, it would take two of these bottles. Now, we won't get into this, I have a video on this somewhere, but this product does clean the whole fuel system. It cleans the fuel lines, the fuel filter, everything. Um, which brings us up to the next thing. The second issue that a lot of people might have is gonna be the fuel filter. Um, the built-in fuel filters in these systems is a fuel filter kind of uh, water separator um, at the bottom of, the, of it. It's kind of hard to get in here because my, my talon's sitting right here. But what we're going to be working with is this red cap right here. And for the most part, all we're going to need is our wrench, a ratchet again. Um, and I have the tool for it um, because it just makes it simpler. This is not necessary though. Let me get the new one out. Um, it makes it easier and it's not that expensive. It's only a few bucks and you'll, if you run anything with this, this design on top, uh, you'll understand why. But basically, that top, okay, you can, even the manual, the Mercury manual, uh, and most manuals tell you, you can just put a flat tip screwdriver or something this way across them, okay? Um, but you just have to be solid in there. Um, and then the only other thing you need is, this has two O-rings on it, so you don't ever wanna insert an O-ring dry, so we're gonna put a little oil on it. So I'm actually just gonna put some of my Injecto oil on it because I, that's already what's going into the motor. So, um, and to get this off, we just need a clear path. So, some of the throttle and uh, linkage um, has ball joints on it. So, you just gently pull it out. You just remember which direction it goes. I don't know that it matters, but uh, I like to remember which direction it goes. So, when I put it back on, I'm going to take it all the way off to make it. Well, you don't really have to, but to make it easier, I mean, I'll leave it on so I don't have to remember. But so, righty tighty lefty loosey, just like everything else for the most part. Not everything, but most things. So, uh, tool on, and this grabs every tooth, so you don't really have to worry about it. And it should be snug, but uh, 
Remember the plastic threads going into an aluminum housing. So both things are pretty soft. And you're just unthreading it. There is fuel in here. So you will start smelling it. Okay. And be careful when you take it off depending on where you're at. There's the old one. You saw the new one, it's pretty white. Um, I'm gonna step this outside real quick. I did forget before we uh, put the new one in, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna drain any water, any condensation that might be in the blow. So let me adjust the camera so you can see. Cause this fuel system catches it also. You're not gonna see me for the most part, but that's okay. So in the bottom, and it's just an eighth inch Allen. Okay, I use a, a, a wrench and a, a little bit. So what you're gonna do is you, you pull one side off, usually the, far, the closest side to the, to the uh, filter. And then each side has a drain plug. Okay, normally you'd have a bucket under you. And then you loosen the Allen, you don't take it all the way out, you just loosen it. But I'm using this because the other side's a little tighter to get in. Oh, that's cool. That went all the way down there. Oh, there we go. All right. So that was anything that was in there, but it's also a little bit of fuel. So you're just trying to get the anything out. Um, fuel will float on top of water. So, and then we're going to do the other side now. So you're going to plug it in back in. And this is designed, and then you tighten this back up. I'm pretty confident that my system's clean enough, but uh, it's just a precaution. That quick shot takes care of a lot of stuff. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. So I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna loosen it a little bit. I'm gonna pull this one off. I'm gonna get it out of the way. There'll be a little bit coming out because there's still something in the hose. Just make sure you snug these back up. So this one should be more of any water, whereas the other one was fuel. All right, plug it back in. And make sure you snug that fitting up. I don't like to take them out all the way. There's no hose clamps or anything on these. Double check this guy. Okay. And fuel on the cowling is not gonna hurt anything. It's uh, in many cases used as a cleaner. And what I'm doing now is I'm opening up my injector oil. Okay, I use the Amsoil injector oil. Um, 
there's less smoke, uh, it has many properties. Uh, we won't go over that today, but uh, it's already going to be going into the engine, so it's, very, it's a, a safe bet. Um, I'm going to take my glove off for this, actually, and all I'm going to do is dip my finger into the oil. This stuff's got some decent thickness, and I'm just lubricating the O-rings, okay? If you install, a, oh, oh, whoops, if you install, <laughs> blooper, if you install an O-ring dry, okay, um, there's, there's a great chance of uh, cracking it, um, breaking it, um, it being stressed, okay? Ideally, if you have the opportunity to take it all the way off and, and do it, but, and then you're just gonna install it. Um, goes right back into the slot don't drop it in there is fuel in there like but gently put it down put it in by hand what you can I'm gonna put my cap on my oil so in case I tip it over brief break okay tighten and all you're gonna do is snug it remember it's plastic threads going into an aluminum housing Okay. Be aware of the things around you for anything you're hitting. It should go smooth. With this tool, if you keep it flat, it won't look all beat up. It won't be uh, over torqued or tightened. It'll go flat. The plastic should sit flat against the aluminum. You shouldn't have to clean off the top surface if it was seated before correctly. Um, that's something you want to check. Uh, I looked at it when it came out, but um, there shouldn't be anything there realistically. Okay, and just tighten it. You don't want to damage the top of the, the filter. Um, like I said, it's just plastic. I don't think it just recorded me putting the cowling back on, but basically the same thing. Lower it straight down um, and push in the clips. Um, hopefully it got the rest. If not, I'll pull it back off and, and show you. You just put the ball joint back on. Uh, you might have to flex it. So this all brings us to confidence on the water um, not having to think about is my, mo my motor running correctly is it going to get me from point A to point B back to point A when I'm done which is the boat launch um, or dock um, confidence is a big deal um, I'm gonna have a whole series on this I have a list of videos I want to make um, and this is just the beginning of it I've been off YouTube for a while and that's gonna stop um, uh, I don't know that I'll ever discuss why. It's nothing has to do with anybody. It was just projects. Um, I bought a house. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit. I bought a house and I need to play store on boat. Um, so it took me time. So uh, and then my work schedule. So um, it is April and I haven't been on the water yet. But it's Sunday and I hope to get this video out today actually. And uh, uh, I plan on going to the water today if it stays decent um, but otherwise yeah I look forward to uh, continuing and uh, if you enjoyed uh, things like this uh, let me know in the comments um, please uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, if you liked it hit the like button if you didn't let me know um, I plan on having a confidence series um, I plan on having a tip series. I'm here to, to help you. Um, I'm not here for money. I don't make anything. I got uh, I have nowhere near the subscribers I need. I have some giveaways coming. I talked about that last time. I never got to it because I just totally forgot. But uh, I got a rod reel giveaway uh, and I'm not talking about a cheapie. Um, and this is going to be one where you're going to be able to pick it out. Um, I'll just set a max mount for the rod and max mount for the reel and it'll be shipped straight to you from the company. So um, I'll have, uh, I'm going to have bait giveaways from some of my sponsors, um, get the name out, um, Gambler Lures has done a lot for me. Um, it's a Florida based company that works awesome here in the Pacific Northwest. 
But uh, I hope you've watched this far, and if you have, I look forward uh, to continuing. Oh, and here's a sneak peek for uh, the future. This camera's pissing me off. So, sneak peek. So I run a Phoenix 721 Pro XP, and people told me, you can't put a 16 inch graph in the console. Yeah, there's your sneak peek. I built the mount. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll do a video on that. And uh, thanks to a couple companies for their ideas on how to build them out. But I keep looking at the screen, sorry. Um, uh, but uh, we're gonna get some things going this year on, on YouTube and, uh, and uh, it's all about taking care of yourself and being confident on the water. So I hope I finished my thought earlier on that. Um, Let's do this. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment and uh, uh, help me out. Um, give me ideas and make sure that uh, you guys are, uh, I'm going in the direction you want me to go um, and stay tuned for future. So thank you for watching. And uh, what the heck was my saying? Oh yeah, uh, I have not been following it, but let's fish all year.